thank you, but I wish you would also add in the introduction a member of the family. I feel that way. I go way, way back with the entire Green Mishra. I was the rabbi in Oceanside. I watched three boys grow up. I saw the entire story, Lillian, from beginning to now. And this is a peak moment. Isn't it nice to know that as we are celebrating today, the entire Jewish world is also celebrating? You might say it's a coincidence. I think it's more than a coincidence. You know, you've heard me speak so many years. For me, the key word is always Hashem. Do you know the date in Hebrew of this day, which is Yom Yerushalayim? It's the 28th of year, and 28 in Hebrew is Chav Ches. But that's not just two letters, it makes a word. And Chav Ches is Koach. And the Gedolim in Eretz Yisrael have said, why did this remarkable day of fulfillment occur on the 28th? We had Israel, yes. But we didn't have the spiritual source, the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael, until we reconquered Yerushalayim. And Yerushalayim is the Koach of Eretz Yisrael. Now I want to show you one other remarkable thing, because we are coming very quickly to Shavuos, and we're going to read the Aserah that he wrote, and God spoke to us and gave us that which guides our lives, and that which is the key to the ceremony, the Torah. And the introductory verse to the Aseret Hadibra and the giving of Torah, chapter 20 in Shemos, is by Yedaber Elohim and Kol Hadvarim Ha'ela Lemor. Now you can trust me on what I'm going to say next, but there's always somebody in Vila. Rabbi, you know, I checked up on you. And you were right, Bar Hashem. You can check up on me. But do you know that the sentence that introduces the giving of the Torah has exactly 28 letters? Because what we are then going to read, and the entire idea of Torah, is the Koach of the Jewish people. And so the Torah and the Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael Shalayim merge into a magic number that is power, and that is the secret of what we are doing today when we commemorate, remember, memorialize, usher, weed, by way of introducing and completing a Torah on Yom Yerushalayim, two ideals that other than his family represented, I would say, the meaning of his life, Torah and Israel. How beautiful. And that is today, Yom Yerushalayim and even the Torah, the Koach, the power. Shakespeare said that we are actors on a stage. Our lives are a play. Chazal say that we are the authors of a book. Every one of us writes a book, the story of our lives. And I was involved in his book. And I want to tell you that a book has five component parts. And they are labeled simply, Horatio, Shemos, Vayikra, Vavidur, and Devarim. So let me tell you the stages of Asher's life. Horatio, you know we all have a beginning. Some people remember. You speak old Yiddish. Where do you come from? What is your ancestry? We are part of a long chain of tradition. Remember where you come from. You remember you're voracious. And Asher knew where he came from. And then when he came to a new community called Oceanside, it had another name, Christian Book. It was nothing. And Asher Ween said it needs an order. Sure. Sometimes the heroes of community are forgotten. I shouldn't say sometimes. All too often. I look back now, 
at my age and what I was like at the time when I knew Asher Ween. I looked up to him as the sage of the community. My God, he was a kid from the perspective of my age, that which I'm not going to say. Where did he get that strength and the wisdom and the power and the leadership ability to do what he did? He created the young Israel of Oceanside because he said a community must have a shul and the shul must be organized. And then he looked around for a rabbi and he had the tremendous vision to say that this man was a good man. So I have to thank him for that. And he was my president and even though he was a president of shul and I the rabbi, I loved him. And I witnessed his voracious as the founder of a new Jewish community and the man who started a beautiful family and the man who represented the aristocracy of Oceanside. Lillian always, you still walk like a queen and you always did and everybody looked up to you. And Asher, Asher Ween, he was the ideal. The next book is Shemos. And the Talmud tells us to just as we are given a name at birth, we have an obligation subsequently to make a name for ourselves, to live up to who we are and who we would be. I don't know if you know this, but you'll find this fascinating. You know that Asher, like in Ashrei Yoshra Beisethel, or like in the beginning of the hill of Ashrei Ha'ish, means happy happy, fulfilled, happy. Do you know that Chazal tell us that that idea of Asher is so significant that the first word in the Torah and the last word in the Torah have Asher in it. Barachus has Asher in it and the last word is Yisrael and Asher is in it. Asher surrounds the Torah. Ah. You have to live up to your name. And Shemos, he lived up to his name and then by Yikra, you have to call out and make your ideas and values be known elsewhere. And he made a reputation for himself. He had unique abilities and it should not go unsaid. I always envied him tremendously in one regard, in many, but one in particular. God says, when he was giving out talent, okay, Bluff, you can talk, but that's why I'm not gonna let you sing. I have no voice whatsoever, no singing voice whatsoever. What a beautiful voice he had. And he gave of that talent. And he davened for the shul. And he lamed magnificently. And subsequently, even I remember Shoshana Yom Kippur, and he was too big for us, he was too good for us. And other communities derived the benefit of that. He went out, that magnificent voice called out to Jews everywhere. So he fulfilled Vayikra. But then there came a time when he said, I want to travel together with Lillian to Eretz Yisrael, because we're speaking about it, speaking about it, it's an ideal, it's a value, but we have to live that value. And so just as in Bamidbar, the Jews journeyed to Israel, he journeyed to Israel, in Moshe. And he had another opportunity to build a shul, because that little nothing there became a magnificent shul. It was a tourist attraction. People came, and they came for many reasons, including to hear how we down there and laying there. It was magnificent. But eventually, we age, and God calls us to our eternal reward. And the last thing that's left of all of us, or should be left of all of us, is dvarim words. He's not here anymore physically, but his words remain. Remember? Remember? You cannot simply accept mediocrity. You have got to do it the best way you can. That's what he tried to teach you. Do it the best, just like I do it the best. He prepared for Laney every single week, even though he knew it like that. He made sure you do it the best, and sometimes he would tell me, Rabbi, that was great, you could do a little better, and the best, the best, the best is we could call forth, and those are the Dvarim, those are the words that remain as the greatest tribute. So, we've had a quick overview. And the story comes to a close with the word Yisrael. You have to remember you are part of the Jewish people. And 
what a fantastic and beautiful way to memorialize him by way of what we have done today, writing another sacred Torah. The Torah was his essence, and now there will remain in script that which he lived for. The last mitzvah in the Torah is Kisbu Lochem Adashir Every one of us is supposed to write a sacred Torah. Who can be a sofer? I can't do it. You can't do it. So we get a sofer, and it is as if, as if we did it. We have now written a sacred Torah. We have fulfilled this mitzvah. I thank you more than words can express for inviting me to be a part of this. I treasure every single memory of Asher Me at home. I remember you when you were little boys and I still see the faces in you now. I'm overwhelmed by the power of memory. But they are good memories and they are precious memories. Mazel tov on this beautiful day. I can't get over it and I just must add this. And she's an ex-speaker anyway. I looked at Lillian. I cannot believe you must be older than me because I know originally you were older than me. <laughs> How can you walk with such grace, dignity, and dignity? You represent all those ideals. And that's why you were so precious to Asha. And that's why you're so precious to me as is your family. And it is now my great privilege to call the next speaker.